In this video, I want to show you how you can create your own reset all button, which resets all your selections that you've made within your Power BI page. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So adding slicers in your reports give your users the ability to change the context of your charts and graphs. It gives them more tools to explore your data using just a few charts in your pages. So when you make selections from a filter in your report, like for example, like let's just drag this and change the selection, you will see that the button on the top right will start to be highlighted. So this is the built-in option to reset all of your selections from your page back to its default. So if you click here, for example, and hit reset, you will see that the selections that I've made have been uh, reset back to uh, how it was. This option is available from the Power BI service, which is where you publish your reports into the online platform. And at the moment, it works. However, there might be some instances, however, where you want to maybe create your own reset button. Maybe an example would be if you embed your reports into a website in which case some configurations won't have that top bar available to your users. Or maybe you want the button to only reset some slicers and not all of them. So I want to show you today how you can easily do this yourself. Here's a report that I pre-prepared for you that will work on today. I won't go too deep into the data model itself because it's not really important. But what we have here in this page is essentially a combination of different uh, visuals. So you have your, um, your cards, you have your bar charts, and you have your line charts. And I've also added a few filters or slicer visuals here on the top. So you have a category name and a product name, and I've changed this into drop downs. So when you make a selection, let's say beverages, you will see that everything else in the page also changes accordingly. So it will give you the context of beverages um, as well as the products will only give you products that are within this beverages category. So let's say what we want to do here is to create a reset button, which resets these selections back to uh, all when we click the button. So let's start by deselecting everything, just leave it uh, to how it is now and we will create a new button here so under insert buttons you can create a blank button or you can use uh, one of the pre-made icons here we can just uh, I mean just to keep it simple we'll just use the reset uh, button here so it creates a button that we can select so we can interact with and currently it's not really hooked up to anything. So if you hit control click, which simulates to if it's uh, when it's selected in uh, in uh, report in Power BI service, it doesn't really do anything yet. So the next thing that we want to do is to create a bookmark. Now I've covered this in a separate video already and bookmarks are actually very versatile. Um, so if you want to know more about bookmarks, uh, go check out those videos because they're really useful. So in this case, what we're going to use the bookmark for is to save the context in which this page is currently at. So basically what you want to do is to bookmark the page that you want the button to go back to. So in which case, none of the filters are selected so that we can go back to this default. So now that we have deselected everything here, we simply hit add here and it will create a bookmark for us here. We'll double click to rename it and we'll say reset that's it so the last thing is to simply go back to our reset button toggle the action here to turn on the action type is bookmark and let's link it to this bookmark that we've just created so now that there is a link to that bookmark every time we click this button it will now simply go back to the state where nothing is selected and nothing is filtered. 
and at its most basic level, we're pretty much done. So what you'll notice here is if I select beverages or if I select a few things here, and I'll hold control to select multiple products. If I now hit the reset button, click here, you'll see that it goes back to this state where nothing is selected, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, what if we want to add a new slicer and we want that to reset as well? And surprisingly, it's very simple. So uh, I'm going to add the calendar here as a slicer, um, as a, uh, yeah, as, as a selection here at the top. So we'll change this context to, for example, like this. And at this point, I don't think you really need to do anything in this new slicer that you've just added. You simply hit reset and it will simply reset everything to how it is by default. What if we want to change the default to something else? So let's say, for example, what we want to do is we want to, by default, when they hit the reset uh, button, it should only look at 1996 data. And we have a few years of data here in our report, but in this case, what we want is to make sure that when they hit this reset to default, it will go back to this selection 1996. So how do we do that? Well, so first of all, let's think about this state that we want to save. So we want this state to be saved when we click the reset button. So now that we've made the selection 1996, let's just complete this by selecting to the end of 1996. And then instead of creating a new bookmark, we can simply just update it. So you click the three ellipses icon, make sure you don't click the bookmark itself because it will just reset everything. And from here, you just simply hit update. So what it will do now is if you make whatever selections you wanted here, and now you hit the reset, you will see that it resets category and the product. But for the calendar, for the slider here, we have it defaulted to 1996. Pretty simple. What if we want only certain slicers to be affected when we hit the reset button? So for example, uh, when we or when our users make changes into this slider here, when we hit the reset button, we only want this button to affect the category name and the product name, but preserve what is the selection in this uh, slider. How do we do that? So let's try this together. So first let's select category name and product name. And then let's go to this bookmark here that we've created. Let's go selected visuals. So this option selected visuals, make sure that uh, this bookmark is only affecting or this reset will only affect the visuals that we've selected, which in this case is the category name and the product name. So let's hit update and let's see if that worked. So we're gonna change it, look at certain categories here, and let's change this context into something random like this. And if we hit the reset here, there we go. So you'll see that the category name has reset, product name has reset, but the date slider didn't. It kept what we did uh, as a change without, uh, without the reset filter affecting it. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to make your very own reset all slicers to default. Thanks for watching, as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.